Well, hello, hello. I'm really excited about the guest that we have today. We have the ultimate matchmaker, Mr. Paul C. Brunson, who is, his, his bio is just remarkable, so I won't even begin to try to capture it all. But I will say that he has had a show, Love Town USA on OWN. He just recently launched a show that I am uber excited about called Help I Need Love, which is centered around the topic that we want to talk to about today. So, Paul, thank you so much for creating space on your calendar to have this conversation with me. My pleasure to be here with you. Thanks for inviting me. So first of all, let me just say congratulations on a phenomenal show. Thank you. Thank you. It touched my heart in so many different ways because with me, I'm all about love. I mean, I'm the founder of the Love and Freedom Academy. Go figure, right? And I, I really want more quality television. But I also, as it relates to dating, I really appreciated the way you honor Courtney's integrity or the integrity of the show with your approach with doing um, the personal work first. And, and you're, you being very intentional about, about connecting her or aligning her with quality candidates that were going to be meaningful. So. And probably not the best TV people. <laughs> But, uh, and, and the only reason why I say that is because one is I really have to thank ABC and Lincoln Square Productions who allowed me the space to be able to do that. Because what we did quite honestly was the biggest social experiment ever uh, in the history of TV. A matter of fact, the only bigger social experiment was when I did Love Town with Oprah uh, in 2010. And the reason why I say this was such a, a big experiment is because this was the first time that anyone has ever looked at love or someone's love life for a full year. Typically, TV shows shoot in three weeks or four weeks or eight weeks or 12 weeks max. Uh, we shot this over 52 weeks. And so because we had so much time, the network allowed me to work one-on-one -on -one with Courtney before we even got into the dating. And so you can't tell because you know, we compacted into to one hour. But I worked with Courtney for about three months, one-on-one, -on -one, before we started her on the pathway to dating. So it's, it's really a tribute to, uh, to ABC's flexibility in allowing us to do that. Well, thank you. Yes, I appreciate ABC, and I also thank you for having the foresight to do that. Now, before I go further with, with speaking about help, I need love. I just want to go backwards for a moment. So I've been following you for a while, so that's why I was more than honored to be one of the ambassadors for the show. But I had the privilege of being at a taping that you did for a show at Harpo Studios a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And before the, the, you started taping, you shared a little bit about your backstory. And I just think that, for some reason, it really pulled my heartstrings. And I would like for you to share that with my audience. And the piece that I'm speaking of is, what led you to becoming a matchmaker in the first place? And if I remember correctly, it had a lot to do with, you were registering some young kids for a program. So I'll let you take it from there. <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, so this was uh, 2008. So between uh, 2005 and 2008, I had a nonprofit organization that primarily operated here in Washington, D.C. That's where I am now. Um, and the nonprofit, what we did is we focused on kids who were uh, anywhere from kindergarten to high school who needed help with math or science. It could be SAT prep, that kind of thing. And we focused primarily on black children who didn't have the financial means to afford tutoring after school. And so by the summer of 2008, we had won basically a big contract from the city of Washington, D.C. to administer a camp. And in this camp, we had high school kids from all around D.C., about 100 high school kids. And on the first day of camp, I was registering the students. And one question I would ask on the registration was, how many parents in the household? And the first person said, you know, I, uh, one, I live with mom. And the second one was like, you know, one, I live with grandma. And the third one was like, one, I live with auntie. And from, one, from person one to person 100, not one said two parents in the household. Not one. A matter of fact, most of them didn't live with men. Most of them lived with women in their life. 
And what was fascinating to me was here we were focusing on math and science, but fundamentally there was something much bigger going on. Mm -hmm. And that was what led me into matchmaking. And, and a year later, I, uh, I opened up the matchmaking agency with my wife. Thank you for sharing that because hearing that story, I got so many times we're looking at where someone is now, but I think that that was really sig a significant point in your, in your story, in this part of your journey in terms of why bringing the right people together who, who had shared values is so important and how it impacts more than just that couple, but the children that they are gonna birth into this world. And so I thought that just had so much meaning. I, I've been carrying that question around for years. I don't know why I never just emailed you or tweeted you about it or something. <laughs> yeah, next time, don't, don't carry it around for years. <laughs> I did, like that really moved me that you care so much about our young people that you wanted to help to bring people together to, to lay a foundation for their growth and their stability. Well, you know, I, I believe, so I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I think real, true, authentic entrepreneurship is about finding problems and then identifying solutions for those problems. And if you can find problems that are close to your heart, problems that uh, correlate with your value system, it makes it much easier for you to create solutions, especially unique solutions. And so that was a problem, a unique problem that I identified. And it was something that was, I was passionate about. Uh, you know, family values is a huge value of mine. Uh, empowerment's a huge value of mine. And so ed you know, education, literacy, huge values. And so it was easier for me to come up with a solution. And the other thing that I'll say is that when you can find a problem that fits within those values and fits within you know, your passion and your ideals, it becomes much easier to work through that problem when times get tough, because times were, were very tough as we grew the, the agency. And so uh, that's just a, a bit of advice I'd throw out to any entrepreneurs out there is find, find real problems that you uniquely have solutions for. Thank you. Which leads me to another point. So on the show, one of the things you worked with Courtney about with was the mask that she was wearing. You know, she seems to be a really beautiful woman, really sweet personality, but she was very matter of fact when she went on her dates. And I don't find that to be uncommon in other areas of people's lives. You know, and I work with women all the time who are carrying, they're wearing multiple masks to protect themselves from potential pain or disappointment or any other um, perceptions that are out there that could feel harmful or hurtful. And so I appreciated the way that you gently reminded her of who she was and how she could show up in that space, being truly, you know, authentic without the need for that. So with that said, do you have any other tips to offer to someone else who may be wearing a mask, whether it's in their dating relationships or in um, another area of their lives? Sure, sure. I mean, this is going, this is much easier said than done because yes. I met <laughs> Courtney for three months. And so it took, it took three months to, to take that mask off. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you're talking about love, the prerequisite to all love is vulnerability. So you can't love unless you're vulnerable. And the way that I like to look at it, and actually I, I'm 99% sure I explained this to Courtney at some point, mm -hmm. is that if you think of you, know, you like you are a house, right? You are you know, this, this pristine, this beautiful house, a mansion. And around the mansion is a fence because you wanna protect, right? With your yard, you wanna protect the house. So there's this big old fence. Well, when you invite people to your house, they need to walk through the fence and get to your house. But in order to get through the fence, you have to first open up the door to the fence. And that's the magic because you can't keep a closed fence and then expect anyone to be able to get into your house unless they're great at climbing fences. But I got like a 20 foot fence in my house. Right? <laughs> but, but, the, but the point there is that you have to open up the gates. And so it's the same thing with love. It's the prerequisite to love is vulnerability. Vulnerability is that action of opening up the gates. And so 
if you can if you can do that, you know, uh, you, you're in a much stronger position. And the other thing I'd say real quick in terms of folks, uh, you know, keeping that mask is that what we tr what we attempt to do when we we wear a mask is we attempt to emulate someone else. Especially we attempt attempt to emulate what's what's pop culture, what's considered to be uh, you know, status quo, what's in, considered to be acceptable. But what we have to realize, and this is more the case now in 2017 than it ever was in the history of this world, is that our uniqueness is where our power lies. And so the key to becoming successful in anything, in business, in uh, platonically, in r romance, is to be able to embrace all of those quirks, all those things that make you different, all those things that make you unique. And as a matter of fact, you don't just want to embrace it, you want to put a spotlight on it. And that's something that I also was able to teach Courtney. And by the time that you know our three months were over in terms of just the coaching, she embraced it, right? She understood the vulnerability, she opened up that fence, uh, and she found love. And that, again, was something that was very near and dear to my heart, again. <laughs> Um, one of the other things that you shared to her, with her was, let me see, I made a note of it. You said to her <laughs> that not every great guy is meant for every great gal. Right. And that reminded me of a quote that I have in, um, in my book, Radical Love. I wrote a chapter about meeting my husband, and it says that the man in your heart is not necessarily the man in your dreams. And I was in love with mm. a great guy who was not the man of my dreams. And I had to be willing to first stand in the truth about that and acknowledge that I had a conversation with him and let him know that I was releasing him mm -hmm. and that he would no longer be captive of my heart and I was gonna do some work for myself and free myself up to be able to love in a new and exciting way that was meant for me. And, um, and doing that journey of me taking time to take care of myself and even being willing to let go of that, which required a great level of vulnerability to even admit that. Yes. I met my husband, the man of my dreams, within about three months after that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so when you shared that with her, it made me really think about my own story in terms of sometimes we're holding on to, um, to something that's really not meant for us anymore. The season is up. Yeah, you, you know what I was gonna say? Oh gosh, my computer's messing up again. Uh, what I was gonna say is that uh, it, it's, it's a matter of fact, you know, it's funny. This was not planned at all. But, uh, but you know, every week I, I read three books and I write uh, summaries on all the three books. So uh, this week I'm reading about pivoting in your career, but this is one of the books right here, Quitting. Uh, that is not necessarily about pivoting in your career. It's about how do you disengage from something. And what you're talking about is you were in a relationship and then you were able to disengage. Mm -hmm. And the, one of, what I'm noticing is that we have a terrible time in disengaging, in letting go. And we oftentimes think, and I think a, a lot of, of the reason for this, and actually the book underscores this, is that we're taught to just persist. We're taught to just stay at it. You know, just keep working at it and, and things are going to happen, right? Things are going to materialize. But the smartest people, the most satisfied people, the happiest people are the people that are able to understand when it's time to stop persisting and start quitting. And that's exactly what you were able to do. And you got the reward for it. Yes, boy, did I. I won big time because he's a great guy. He you really did. is. You did. <laughs> But I wouldn't have had the capacity to be able to receive the love that he was willing to offer me had I continued on that path. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I also feel is really important. So have you come across that in your work too, where there's, a, you know, you mentioned that, that gate being around the mansion, but where people can't even get in the driveway to pull up to the gate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's uh, I'd say that it, it happens more times than not. Uh, because and, and, and I get it, you know, it's the way that society has kind of trained us is to protect ourselves and watch our back and uh, keep the gates up high. Like that's, that's the way that, that we've been brought up. And so we have to, and that's the reason why coaching uh, and, and counseling is so important is because we have to retrain ourselves. We really, really do. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Let me see, there's something else I had on here that I want to make sure I mention. 
because you know I watch the show. I take the show. I took notes from the show. I <laughs> uh, have some questions about things as it relates to being in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I wanted to mention. Now, this was, I saw in, a, in one of the interviews that you talked about um, that when the show was going to air, that you were going to be with your family and actually experience it. And in this, in the way that society is set up now, we're constantly moving and we're on the go and we're forgetting about being present and actually fully experiencing everything. And so I wanted to ask you two questions. How was that for you to so this time around actually be present and watch the show? And then the other question is, what are your tips for someone being more present in their relationships? Well, I will say that the first answer is, it was good in idea, but not great in execution. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> because we have a three-year-old in addition to a six-year-old. Now the <laughs> six-year-old, you know, he could really care less that his dad was on TV. So he fell asleep probably in the first 10 minutes and he was gone. But the three-year-old, you see, he wanted attention because we had, uh, you know, we had two people over, right? My cousin and uh, one of my best friends. And so my three-year-old, he's running around the, enti the entire time he was running around. So, it, you know, it's interesting because even though that happened, it was still a million times better than being on social because I had the opportunity to share that with my family. So uh, long story short though is after everyone went to bed that night, uh, I got up at like maybe 2, 2.30 and I watched the show. So I could actually <laughs> watch it. Uh, but, but I will say this, as far as your second question, the, 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 the number one thing that we can do, I think there's actually two things that we can do. One is that we have to understand and we have to fully embrace that we don't, that yesterday or the moment that just passed is the moment that's in the past. The moment that's to come is the moment that's in the future. So the only moment that we have is in the present. And the issue that a lot of us have is that we try to multitask, especially with technology. But if we could finally understand that there is no such thing as multitasking, there's no way that I can listen and be attentive to the questions that you're asking. And at the same time, uh, you know, be on my computer or checking email. It's, it's impossible. Now there's task switching where I could switch back and forth, but there's no such thing as multitasking. And if you really grasp that, that there's no such thing as multitasking, that your mind can only pay attention to one thing at a time then you begin to truly realize that you can't multitask. You can't sit and have a meaningful conversation with a family member and also be on social media at the same time. It's, it's impossible. So, so that's really one, right? One is to understand that, uh, that the only moment that we have is the moment that we have right now, not the last moment, not the moment that's coming up. That's one. The second thing is a more tactical suggestion. And so this is something that actually came out of a book that I read uh, called Manage Your Day to Day. It's a 99U book. Uh, and it was phenomenal. But the, the big lesson from it was everything that's important to you, put on a calendar. And it's interesting because I sometimes get uh, um, uh, you know, alerts that pop up because when my oldest, Kingston, who's six, but when he was... Uh, three or four, uh, he was, I, I picked him up from school every day at three and I had blocked my calendar from three until five so that I could pick him up, spend some time with him, right? But it was on the calendar and I still haven't removed it. Uh, but the point here is that if, if something is important to you, then put it on your calendar. And what's, what's interesting about putting things on your calendar, even though it's family time, is that you can then begin to reflect and look at well, how much time are you allocating, you know? Um, or how much time are you not? And so tactical tip, put important things, including the time that you plan to spend with the family, put that on the calendar. And then the second is to, or the first really, is to really understand that the only moment we have is now, and there's no such thing as multitasking. Yeah, great. 
that's something that I, I am working on. I'm not a multitasker anyway, but in terms of even with my relationships, when I'm on the phone, I want to be on the phone with that person. And so sometimes I'll say, may I call you back in just a minute? Let me finish what I'm doing. And then I can call them back so that I can be fully present. Um, although sometimes I find that they aren't fully present because they're talking to somebody else in the background and all of those things. <laughs> And then even with my husband, I'm learning to be more present with him, even in the car. So instead of riding in the car and I'm on my phone, checking email or doing something like that, but learning to actually be with him and we have a conversation on that ride and enjoy the ride, whether it's something silly or whether it's something, you know, um, that's really a topic that we need to discuss. It's still being right there in that moment during that time has really served us well. And so I, I'm always working to help my clients with that same thing as I learn to master it myself. But mm -hmm. I, I, basically it's a tool, you know, and Absolutely. it's practice. Lots of practice. <laughs> Lots of practice. So um, is there anything that, any last words that you want to say as it relates to the show, Help I Need Love, in terms of what more we can do to help support the show, and even in the fact that we all need love anyway, right? Well, I'd say I, I appreciate that question. I will say that it looks like, you know, we were successful enough in our first special that we'll be coming back with another special. Uh, it, it, now, it hasn't been confirmed, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm getting, uh, you know, indications that that's probably going to happen. And so the big thing that I would say for everyone who's interested in the show uh, or interested in the, really this movement around empowering single parents in particular is to become an ambassador. Uh, and that's real simple, emailing kwanda at kwandalam.com. She's the head of our ambassadors so that we can prepare so that when we find out about the next air date, that we'll be ready with an even you know, more massive army. Because at the end of the day, you, and you mentioned this right at the beginning, is that you wanna see more good TV, you know, good shows on TV. And I believe this is a really good show. This is a show that you can watch with your kids, you can watch this with your grandparents, uh, you can get entertained, you can learn, uh, you know, nothing crazy is gonna happen in terms of, you know, gratuitous is gonna happen. Uh, but we really have to fight uh, because, you know, this type of content isn't the most popular content. And so for us, it's that we have to just let, we have to get the word out so that more people know about it. So that's, that's really the, the biggest way to, uh, to help the show is to become an ambassador and be ready for our next special that's coming. And then for everyone else, you know, who uh, is just looking for love, or maybe you're looking for love and you want to support, you know what? There's, there's so much advice out here, but the, 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 I'll give you something tactical right now that I'm sure everyone has heard. But the tactical thing is surround yourself with people who are walking their talk. I think this is really important. There are so many people out here giving advice, giving, you know, advice. Um, and the challenge with advice is that advice is very tactical. It's very situational. So what, what works for someone in a particular situation is not necessarily going to work for you or work for me in my situation or your situation. So when you get around people who are offering up advice, or should I say information, look for folks who are giving you counsel and not just advice. Counsel, where counsel is different is, is advice is how I did it. Counsel is let me help you to rethink how you're doing it. It's an, an, it's an elevated stage of, uh, of, of knowledge sharing. And so that's the best thing you could do is get around people who can give you counsel because then you can make real change in your life. Tactics are not going to, are, are typically not gonna get you there. So get around folks, right? Like Melanie, who are gonna give you counsel. And then at the same time, email kwanda at kwandalam.com and become an ambassador for Help I Need Love. Awesome. And that's kwanda, K-A-Y-W-A-N-D-A, -A -A, and lamb, L-A-M-B. Okay. Yes, that is it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Keep, keep, keep shining and keep putting good work out there. We really appreciate um, that you are creating more harmony and love in the world. Thank you. A lot. You know, I don't take that lightly and wishing you much success in all your other endeavors. Thank you.
Thank you. And I would say, you, I, likewise, I appreciate everything. I appreciate the support from the Chicago Harpo taping, right, all the way till today, because that's been a, a couple years. There's a couple years of that. So thank you very much for all the support. And, and every project that I take, everything that I do, you know, I'm always thinking of my community in mind and how it's going to help them, impact them, empower them. And so, you know, so I appreciate it. And, and with your support, I'm going to keep going. Thank you. Thank you. One thing before I go, my mom used to always say, Melanie, you meet the nicest people. And although I guess this is our meeting, she has never been wrong because great people continue to cross my path. And what I mean by that is I'm talking about their character. I'm talking about the values that they bring. And just want to say acknowledge you in that, that you are one of those people my mom talks about. Well, well I, I appreciate it. <laughs> I do. You know, I like to say, I think good people know good people. Uh, and I, I find that to, to be the case. Good people know good people. Yeah. So I feel honored. So enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. It looks amazing in D.C. I'm from Maryland, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, today's perfect. It's not too hot. It's probably, you know, 80s. It's, it is, it's awesome. Awesome day. Awesome. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you. Thank you.